John Gallagher, Bozeman High School Math Department, and Bozeman Public Library trustee. I'm going to read from The Graves of Wrath by John Steinberg. Math teacher has to follow all these great English principles. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope I, I hope I do myself justice. It's all about love. <laughs> so close your eyes. Imagine it's 1939. John Steinbeck has written The Grapes of Wrath. It's received accolades with the National Book Award, the Pulitzer Prize, and the Nobel Prize for it's also fueled political and public debate over the content of this book. It examines work, working class conditions. Opponents claim it exaggerates the plight of the poor. Some communities even burn this book. We traveled to California in Kern County. I vote to four to one. The commission bans Grapes of Wrath because of the unfavorable light Steinbeck trades, landholders, and store owners. Now, go forward in time. It's 1980. A teenager gets in a fight with his parents, locks himself in his room for the weekend. He has nothing to do. He completes his freshman book for that month in three days, and he becomes hooked on reading. That was me. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> 1980, I was a freshman in high school, and we had this, and it set me on a path uh, that didn't know it at the time. I was raised in a fairly conservative political household, and I started reading people like Steinbeck and then John Dos Passos, and then I went south to the Latin American writers. So now I don't find that I'm so conservative, and maybe I won't say I'm liberal, but social justice is something. For those of you who haven't read it, um, this is set during the Great Depression. We're following a family from the Dust Bowl region westward to California, a place where they're hoping their dreams will come through. Their land has been taken away from them. It's been foreclosed by the bank. And they're, we're going to follow them throughout this book in their economic hardships, their physical hardships, their grief. I chose uh, several passages from chapter 19. Um, it's just after they're entering into the California, and the grandmother just dies as they sneak across the border. Once California belonged to Mexico, and its land to Mexicans, and a horde of tattered, feverish Americans poured in, and such was their hunger for land that they took. The Mexicans were weak and fled. They could not resist because they wanted nothing in the world as frantically as the Americans wanted land. Then, with time, the squatters were no longer squatters, but owners. And their children grew up and had children of the land, on the land. And the hunger was gone from them, the feral hunger, the gnawing, tearing hunger for land, for water and earth, and the good sky over it, for the green thrust, thrusting grass, for the swelling roots. They had these things so completely that they did not know about them anymore. And then the dispossessed were drawn west, from Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Mexico, from Nevada and Arkansas, families, tribes, dusted out, tractored out. They streamed over the mountains, hungry and restless, restless as ants, scurrying to find work to do, to lift, to push, to pull, to pick, to cut, anything to burden the bear. For food, the kids are hungry. We got no place to live, like ants scurrying for work, for food, and most all, for land. We ain't foreign. Seven generations back, Americans, and beyond that, Irish, Scottish, English, German, <coughs> One of our folks in the Revolutionary War. And that was lots of our own folks in the Civil War, both sides, Americans. They were hungry and they were fierce, and they had hoped to find a home, and they found only hatred, hopes. 
The owners hated them because the owners knew they were soft, and the yogis were strong. But they were fed, and the yogis were hungry. And perhaps the owners had heard from their grandfathers how easy it is to steal land from a soft man if you are fierce and hungry and armed. The owners hated them, and in the towns, the storekeepers hated them because they had no money to spend. There is no shorter, shorter path to a storekeeper's contempt, and all his admirations are exactly opposite. The town men, little bankers, hated Okies because there was nothing to gain from them. Because a hungry man, because a hungry man must work, the wage payer automatically gives him less for his work, and then no one can get more. And the great owners, who must lose their land in an upheaval, Great owners with access to history, with eyes to read history, and to know the great fact. When property accumulates in too few of hands, it is taken away. And the companion fact, when a majority of the people are hungry and cold, they will take by force what they need. And the little screaming fact that sounds through all history, repression works only to strengthen and knit the repressed. The great owners ignored the three cries of history. The land fell into fewer hands. The number of the dispossessed increased, and every effort of the great owners was directed at repression. The money was spent on arms, for gas to protect the great holdings, and spies were sent to catch the burden of revolt so that it might be stamped out. The changing economy was ignored. Plans for the change ignored, and only means to destroy revolt were considered, while the causes of revolt went on. Our people are good people. Our people are kind people. Pray God someday kind people won't all be poor. Pray God someday a kid can eat.